Hello, welcome to the New Stack Makers, a podcast where we talk about at scale application development, deployment, and management. Thanks to the Cloud Foundry Foundation for sponsoring our podcasts and live streams from the Cloud Foundry Summit in Basel, Switzerland. Learn more about the Cloud Foundry runtime and application runtime at cloudfoundry.org. Hey, it's Alex Williams with the New Stack and the first coverage from Cloud Foundry Summit in Basel, Switzerland. I'm here with Chip Childers. Hey, Chip, how are you? I'm doing wonderful. Basel is a great city. Basel. I'm here. It's a great place. Basel, 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 Switzerland. And you have come here because this is really right the epicenter of Europe, isn't it? It's like, I mean, in terms of it's a very, it's a very much of a hub, a commercial center. You get easily here from different parts of Europe, and it's actually quite a, a city that will full of the arts. It's quite actually an interesting place to have a conference. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing, and we, we have such an uh, outstanding Cloud Foundry community in, in throughout Germany and here in Switzerland with, with Swisscom and um, a number of the, the end users that are here. It's, it's really great and central for them. So, so Chip, you're, you're, you're the lead technologist really at Cloud Foundry Foundation, yep. right? Yep. And so, you know, in that role, you play a big part in really defining the, the direction. And so you made actually an announcement today that we did not we did not anticipate where Kubo is now almost like the core of in many respects of what you're now offering through the cloud through the Cloud Foundry's platform and through the container uh, runtime, which you're calling it. Yeah. Which now so is so Kubo is now the Cloud Foundry container runtime. Correct. And it runs with the Cloud Foundry application runtime yeah. on Cloud Foundry Bosch. Bosch. Let's break that down. I, I think I, I think instead of focusing on the names to start, let's let's start with the what are the end users looking to achieve? Yeah. Right? But I just want to make, make it yeah, we won't talk about but I just think it's clear because we have been calling it Kubo up until now. That's that's true. Yes. And so yes. we'll just say now that, that basically that was like pilot name, whatever you want to call yeah, it. Absolutely. And now we're moving into this new kind of but now it's a now we're talking about this you know, these new different the runtime, the application runtime and on Bosch. And so yes, and so why don't we start with what you're saying about that experience? Sure, sure. So so the naming is, is relevant only yeah. because it, it helps it helps our community, it helps our downstream distributions understand um, and, and share, have a shared understanding of the importance of both the Cloud Foundry's traditional platform as a service experience, which you know most of our user stories are, are about how how great that is at helping uh, speed up development of, of software, um, but that also needs to be paired with other types of abstractions for developers. And right. there's, there's some very clear use cases where you'd want to deploy containers directly. Right. Um, so what we're seeing is that by combining different abstractions and supporting it in a very common way, we can help both the developer experience improve as well as the operator experience be consistent across the, the different um, capabilities they're trying to give to their development teams. Right. Um, so traditional application development, um, you know, that used to be very monolithic. Obviously, that's being broken down into microservices. People are, ex uh, uh, you know, adopting the agile development processes. Um, Cloud Foundry application runtime is designed to support that, first and foremost, right? That developer experience is focused on fast time to get code shipped and deployed. Our container runtime takes the world, you know, the best in class um, container scheduling software, Kubernetes. Um, it focuses on that operational consistency and some of the power of the Cloud Foundry Bosch layer um, in terms of day two operations of the platform that, that we've we've got a great community that's been using it for all kinds of systems. Um, it brings Kubernetes into that, that space. Um, but the other work is really, it, it's ongoing. It's, it's work to make sure that the, the developer interaction with both the Cloud Foundry application runtime and container runtime is, is seamless. So how can Kubernetes get more deeply integrated into the um, application runtime? How can they share backing services? And you know, you've come to a number of our summits, um, 
We've talked a lot about the open service broker API efforts. Um, that was kind of step one in the process of getting these, these platforms to work well together and to have a shared marketplace of services behind them. Okay, so let's talk about the technical architecture. Sure. You know, just so people may not have been familiar with, you know, how these you know, services are integrating now. Um, I think of it as like a, almost like a loosely coupled environment in, to some degree, where we're you're using Kubernetes as that infrastructure, and then we, then running that with Bosch. So just help us understand what that technical architecture is. Yeah. Happy to. So, so let's specifically talk about what the, the Cloud Foundry Container Runtime does. Yeah. So let's first start with Cloud Foundry Bosch. Okay. That is a system for managing platforms. Right. Right, that's the way you can think of it. Um, it's what abstracts all of the public cloud infrastructure options, all of the, uh, all of the private data center infrastructure options, um, uh, systems like OpenStack that are run both you know, uh, by public providers as well as you can run it you know, within your own data centers. So Bosch abstracts that infrastructure, it also is focused on making it um, easy to manage these complex distributed platforms, right? Because you just think about um, you think about Kubernetes. It's got you have an etcd cluster, you have um, master nodes, you have uh, all of the you know all of the nodes that, that are going to host the containers. Um, how do you do something like, for example, if a node goes offline, Kubernetes is going to do a great job of rescheduling any containers or pods that were running in that in that node. What allows a new node to be brought back online? That's that's where kind of Bosch comes into play. Um, its its value is at the operator level. Now, once you're able to instantiate and manage Kubernetes clusters, you can start doing interesting things with them, right? Like you can, for example, um, expose the ability to create a Kubernetes cluster on demand directly to the development teams, so they can CF create service Kubernetes small, um, and then begin to load things like package software that might be delivered to them um, in, in a Docker um, uh, container image format or an OCI image format. Um, they can load uh, data services that are born of the container era in, into those uh, kube clusters that, that are deployed. Um, so it, it opens up a number of different options for, for those development teams so that they can write their custom code, they can marry that with, with code that they're, or software they're receiving from others that runs really well on, on container platforms. So, for the people who may not know the history, sure. Bosch first uh, was developed for Cloud Foundry through yeah. VMware several years ago, five, seven years ago, eight years ago. I'm trying to really date it back now. I, 2009, 2010. Yeah, some, somewhere in there. Actually, so, no, it's, uh, it was five years old uh, earlier this year. Okay, so, so, so for people who may not be familiar with it, what exactly is Bosch? Tell us what it is, how it yeah. works, you know. You, 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 talk, you, you, you referenced it when you were just giving us yeah, that yeah. kind of good answer there, but can you just give us a little bit more understanding of what Bosch is and why it's so critical? Sure, absolutely. So, so first, um, a little history beyond the five years. Okay. The design of Bosch itself is directly descendant from Google's Borg platform. So Google um, runs a massive number of data centers, a huge amount of infrastructure, and they've they created a, a custom system to do that. It's called Borg. Bosch is a open source version of that. Uh, Kubernetes also, coming out of Google, um, was based on some of the basic design principles of Borg as well. Um, and so, so they both have a very shared lineage, but what matters is that they have slightly different concerns. So Kubernetes doesn't work with infrastructure, it's run in hosts and it supports containers you know, being, being deployed into it. Um, what, what Bosch does is it looks down into the infrastructure and says, give me an API and it will take responsibility for provisioning any of the software that you want within that infrastructure. And so, so it provisions Kubernetes, as an example. It provisions the Cloud Foundry application runtime components, as an example. Um, it, it does that, um, it really has a very, very simple architecture um, at, at the high level. There's a thing called a Bosch director. 
It's the controller, it's the control plane. Um, it, it talks to the different infrastructure options based on this thing called the CPI or the Cloud Provider Interface, um, which maybe is misnamed because it's not just clouds, it's also uh, you know, vSphere and a number of you know, private infrastructure options. And it, it consumes um, really two different YAML file artifacts. So one of them is the uh, Bosch release of the software that you want to be deploying. Right? So that's, what is the software, what is the configuration that we're going to want to have on the various nodes. Um, it, it clusters them into the concept of jobs, right? so jobs is the uh, abstract metaphor. And the second thing that you combine is, is what's called the deployment manifest. So the deployment manifest says, how many nodes of each job do I want to have deployed, and what are some of the rules and configurations you know, that, that, uh, that I want to put in place in terms of the amount of storage, the instance sizes. Um, and so, so Bosch looks at that and says, this is a declarative model that I now understand as the Bosch director, and my job is to make that happen. Right, so very similar to, again, what Kubernetes does when someone says, run n number of this pod, it will in a very declarative way say, great, and a control loop will, will begin that will make that happen. So it will converge on what you've declared. Bosch operates the same way. Okay. So Bosch is really, is, you know, is obviously then core to, you know, Cloud Foundry and, and has a lineage there. How does it fit into then this new model that we're seeing where containers are rapidly becoming the way to you know build microservices, for example? What are the use cases that are going to emerge that are you seeing emerge now that makes this important? That makes that makes uh, you know the cloud found cloud foundry runtime you know that you guys are talking about today so critical? Yeah, the container runtime. Container runtime, right? So what did so, I call it? I called it the. Well, you just said cloud foundry runtime. So yeah, two yeah, runtimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. One is the application runtime, and right, that's the right. PaaS experience. Right. Then there's the container runtime, yes. which is managed Kubernetes. Yes. That container runtime is uh, designed to solve the exact use case that you just mentioned, right? There's, there's a lot of um, Linux container um, uh, software that's being developed and, and distributed as Linux containers. And this gives enterprises that are adopting the Cloud Foundry suite of software a target to land those. And they know that it's well managed because not only is, uh, are they getting the benefit of Kubernetes managing the containers that are deployed, but they get the benefit of CF Bosch underneath it, ensuring that Kubernetes is healthy. Okay, so so tell us then what is the you know you know what is what is the path then for you know for this for this infrastructure that you announced today essentially yeah what, what what is what is it that you're what is it that you're looking to achieve here you know for the for the community. Well, I think that what's most important right now is is thinking about we're we're always focused on the developers, right? right. So, so what is it that the developer in the enterprise needs? Um, that developer experience is the most important thing, bar none, um, in in our minds. Um, everything else flows from that. Um, oftentimes, some of these you know projects are open source infrastructure projects tend to be very infrastructure focused. So they think about speeds and feeds up, and eventually they get they find the application. Right. Um, the Cloud Foundry community overall looks at it as development team, developer experience, and then looking down. So. What we, f what we expect to have happen that's going to emerge out of our, our open source community is that um, we're going to begin to see a lot of the adoption of Kubernetes sitting next to the, the Cloud Foundry application runtime, so container runtime and app runtime sitting next to each other, which is also going to necessarily cause um, an improvement in the integration options that are available for things like shared identity between Kubernetes and uh, Cloud Foundry application runtime. So, so tell me then, what what will it do today that is not that that is that's not been possible or just hasn't been as easy to do, you know, now that you have this this new capability? Yeah, so I think it opens up a, a number of different possibilities. Um, one, the, the one thing that I would say um, for 
an enterprise that's going to that already has the Cloud Foundry application runtime in place. They're using Bosch to manage that um, very frequently. And, and I'll use Bloomberg as an example because they were the initial um, they were the initial customer of Pivotal when Pivotal partnered with um, with Google to create the what was the Kubo project and now now the container right. runtime. Um, they also had a number of, of data services that they were managing with Kubernetes, but they had a management problem. How do I actually manage Kubernetes? Um, so that was like number one, right, the operator. And then number two was, how do I then ensure that the data services that I'm deploying into Kubernetes are easily accessed from apps that we're, we're you know, pushing into the, the application runtime? So it's really about the operational consistency and then the developer experience being much more integrated. Um, we're seeing things like uh, a service broker to instantiate Kubernetes clusters on demand uh, being created. So that, that uses the container runtime, um, it uses the open service broker API, it can then expose that into the, the application runtime so you can literally type CF, create service, Kubernetes, you, that development team gets a Kubernetes cluster um, and they know it's going to be managed just like the databases that we, they would have asked for in the, same, uh, in the same way in the past. So what we're seeing is, you know, you know we're seeing this a lot across the market. We're, we're seeing, uh, uh, you know, we, we talked to, for instance, uh, Microsoft uh, quite a bit at the Open Source Summit. And they're all about this developer experience, right? Yeah. There's also been other, you know, I've, I've, I've been seeing other accounts of people saying that Kubernetes, if you want to just like, like a, um, install Kubernetes on your own, good luck. I hope you have the technical talent to do that. It's just, it's, it's you know, it's a, it's a technical challenge. It has been to this point, but now, you know, probably it's getting easier to some extent, but yeah. but it's but there's this abstraction happening, right? So what does that abstraction mean to you? What what is it? What is happening in you know what is happening to you know these ecosystems now that we're seeing Kubernetes mature, but also these other services starting to come almost you yeah. know together in the, this this abstraction to make the developer experience possible? Yeah. So I'd actually say two things. So first installing a platform like Kubernetes or Cloud Foundry application runtime. That's typically not the biggest problem. That's not the hardest problem. The it's hardest day problem two. is yeah, day two, right? You got it. So, so that happens to be what the container runtime project is all about. Yes, it instantiates it, but more importantly, it cares for it for you, right? It makes it easier to scale it. Um, supporting rolling updates is really important. Um, so, just I just wanted to make sure that, that that was a pretty clear point. Yeah. Second thing that I'd say is, you know, what, what does it mean that we have all of these great open source technologies? Um, we're all starting to blend. They're converging. Yeah. You know, why does that matter? Well, I think it matters because we're we're seeing co innovation happen where the, the vendors involved and the users that are getting involved are all working together to create um, what, what I see is an emerging larger platform of open source software um, that, that really is going to it's going to dominate the technology space for, for decades to come. And it, it really is, it's going to be a combination of these projects. And it's not just Cloud Foundry application runtime and Bosch and, and Kubernetes, um, but it's it's new and younger projects like Istio, which just had their you know, 0.2 release, right? Very early on, but uh, enormous potential for a shared service. Huge potential. Right? So there, all of these components are starting to come together. We're starting to see what's the, uh, we're starting to see which platforms are best in class for what they do. We're starting to see where they can complement each other effectively, where we can start blending architectures together. Um, it's opening up a world of possibility for the users and, and frankly, it allows for options. You can work with multiple cloud providers using this open source software and, and if they offer it as a service, then you get some consistency there. So it's, it's, uh, it's a bright future. You also announced Foundry. Yeah, the, our marketplace. Our yeah, marketplace. which speaks a little bit of what we're talking about here. It does because if you want to scale out, you're going to need to be able to like, you know, we the the term I that that was used a lot, I think in the, you know, in the earlier part of this, uh, you know, of I think of this movement that really I think began several years ago was about glue, right? How yeah. do you glue these services together, right? Because it became, that was like the trick. How, you know, how do you connect all these different services? And now, 
it seems like we're moving into this next generation where it's getting a bit easier because the cloud service providers have, have stood up to some degree and have said, yeah, we're going to abstract it. So if you are using Jenkins, you can use Jenkins. Don't worry about it, yep. right? You know, if you're going to be, you know, we're going to we're going to adopt Terraform because, you know, Terraform just ha actually has, you know, templates across 30 different platforms, right? Yep. So it seems like what we're seeing is kind of this kind of the kind of this extension of that kind of discussion you know at a scale and it's to me kind of almost symbolizes what you guys are talking about today yeah a bit so so the foundry for for the audience is um, it's the cloud foundry marketplace for for lack of a better term um, we what we wanted to do was to to create a place very simple it's on a, you know it's a website um, but we really wanted to create a place that made it easy for a user of cloud foundry or a prospective user of cloud foundry and 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 that's inclusive of of application runtime elast uh, um, container runtime as well as you know cf bosch we wanted to make sure that the those users or potential users had a place to go to see how deep our ecosystem is. And it's not just technology that can integrate, it's also our training partners, it's also the uh, systems integrators that know how to work with the various distributions of Cloud Foundry, know how to work with the different services that can be tied into it. Um, so that's that's really what the Foundry is. It's, it's the place to go, you can discover where the distributions are, you can discover um, what backing services they make available, you can discover the backing services that are available across the distributions, um, and and really go also go find the help, the people that can help you right, right. change your organization. Well, Chip, this has been great. I, I, I have a more clear understanding of what you guys are talking about this morning and how you know how how the foundation is moving forward and helping think through kind of these trends we're seeing across the market and yeah. how they apply to the Cloud Foundry community. So thanks for taking the time. Great, I was happy to be here. Great. Thanks a lot, Alex. Thanks to the Cloud Foundry Foundation for sponsoring our podcasts and live streams from the Cloud Foundry Summit in Basel, Switzerland. Learn more about the Cloud Foundry runtime and application runtime at cloudfoundry.org. Listen to more episodes of the New Stack Makers at thenewstack.io slash podcasts. Please rate and review us on iTunes, like us on YouTube, and follow us on SoundCloud. Thanks for listening, and see you next time. <laughs>